It is estimated that more than 1 million people disappear every year in the world. Most of these disappearances are linked to serious crimes such as kidnapping and murder. Many of them, due to lack of clues or lack of police resources, end up going unsolved. In the midst of this, family members and even police officers resort to unconventional methods to try to locate the missing person. In today's video, I'm going to talk about five disappearance cases that were solved with the help of paranormal people. Let's dive into it. 1. Paula Brown Paula Brown, a 30-year-old hairdresser, disappeared in Sydney, Australia, in 1996. She was last seen at a party with her friends on a busy street called Oxford. Norma, Paula's mother, and Daryl, Paula's younger brother, flew to Sydney two days later to look for her. They posted several flyers on light poles around the city. In an appeal for any information that would help find the girl, police also placed mannequins dressed in the clothes Paula was wearing at the time she disappeared, a zebra print miniskirt, black lace shirt, black tights and platform shoes. David, Paula's fiancé, desperate, asked a psychic named Philippe Durant to help find her. Philippe used a map, a pendulum and a strand of Paula's hair to try to locate her. After the pendulum indicated an area on the map, the psychic informed the police where Paula could be. Eventually, Paula's body was discovered by a truck driver just over a mile away from the location the psychic had indicated. The truck driver stopped to tie up his load and when he looked down, he saw a body in the bushes. According to an autopsy report, she was killed with two blows to the head and then thrown into the woods south of the city. Norma, Paula's mother, believes the killer was watching Paula in a nightclub, paying attention to the gold jewelry Paula wore. None of the gems were found. In a statement, police said that although the body was found by accident, the information provided by the psychic Philippe Durant was strangely accurate. In 2002, a 33-year-old painter who lived two kilometers from where Paula disappeared was arrested after presenting crazy theories to the police in the days after Paula's disappearance. However, there was not enough evidence to convict anyone and the painter was released. At that time there was no DNA technology that we have today and three years later, the case was shelved. The chick was found dead in his backyard from a drug overdose and so the case remains unsolved. 2. Nell Cropsey On November 21, 1901, a 19-year-old girl named Nell Cropsey disappeared in Elizabeth City, a city located in the state of North Carolina, in the United States. She had gone out to meet her boyfriend, a man named James Wilcox, and never returned home. As time passed, very worried, her family decided to go to James' house. There he said that he had a brief conversation with Nell, where he ended his relationship with her and then took her home and then left. The family was surprised by this version, as they were at home the entire time and did not see Nell enter. The girl's father decided to call the police and James was taken in for questioning. During interrogation, James gave a different version of the one given to the girl's family and despite the suspicion of the police and the inconsistency in the information, he was released. A few days later, a psychic named Snell Newman claimed that James had killed Nell. On December 6, 1901, the psychic went to the victim's house and said he had visions of the last hours of the girl's life. According to him, in his visions he saw James Wilcox using chloroform to make Nell lose her senses. He then wrapped the girl in a blanket, dragged her to a field where he killed her, and then dumped her body in a well. The police decided to verify this information. They went to a well near James' house, but found nothing. On December 28, 1901, Nell Cropsey's body was found floating in a river. The body had several bruises that indicated a physical struggle. James Wilcox was charged with the crime and sentenced to 15 years in prison. 3. Maria Scott On October 3, 2003, the body of a woman was found outside the town of Robertson in Australia. The body belonged to Maria Scott, a 27-year-old prostitute who had been missing for seven months. She had been killed with five stab wounds and the police had 29 suspects in the crime. The list of 29 suspects was reduced to one name, Mark Brown, a man Maria Scott had met in a drug rehabilitation center. However, Mark Brown had moved out of state and the police were unable to locate him. For years after the crime, the investigator in charge of the case, Jeffrey Little, 
turned to a psychic named Debbie Malone for help. According to Debbie's psychic account, she said that Maria Scott was killed in a cabin that belonged to a drug rehabilitation center. The police went to this cabin together with the medium, there she still felt the presence of the knife used in the crime and later the police located this knife in the sink drain. Also according to Debbie, she said that upon entering the cabin, she felt the presence of the killer who passed through her body and that this would only be possible if he was a ghost. Police later discovered that crime suspect Mark Brown had committed suicide shortly after he had moved out of state. 4. Melanie Uribe In 1980, Melanie Uribe, a nurse from Pacoima, California, disappeared. His disappearance was quickly reported to the authorities, who began a major search in the region. Despite efforts, the police were unable to locate her, it was then that a psychic named Etta Smith had a vision of what she believed to be Melanie's location. Etta then decided to go to the police and report this to them, there she spoke to a detective and pointed out on the map where she believed Melanie was. The detective gathered all the information and told her that they would do more searches soon. Etta, however, did not want to wait for the police and decided to go to the scene of her visions on her own. After a search of the place, she found Melanie Uribe's body, she quickly went to inform the police, who suspected her and arrested her. Etta spent three days in prison and was only released when the police managed to locate and arrest the true perpetrators of the crime. Despite being wrongly accused and imprisoned, she said she has no regrets and that if necessary, she would do it all over again. I already did Melanie's case here on the channel. He is very complete. I'll leave it at the end of this video for anyone who wants to watch. 5. Andre Daigle Andre Daigle was last seen in June 1987 in River Ridge, Louisiana, United States. According to witnesses, he was in a bar playing billiards and drinking beer when a young woman approached him and after a while of talking, she asked him to give him a ride home. After four days without news from Andre, his family decided to report his disappearance to the authorities. However, the police did not carry out any searches and also did not issue a missing person report, as they believed that Andre was just somewhere with the young woman he met at the bar. The family obviously didn't believe Andre was with this girl, they felt something was wrong. It was then that his sister, Elise McGinley came into contact with Rosemary Kerr, a paranormal detective. Elise took a picture of Andre and a map to Rosemary and asked her to locate him. The psychic detective started having visions where she saw Andre sitting in his truck, said she saw water, a long bridge and train tracks. She also said that she experienced severe headaches, which were so severe that it felt like they were going to kill her. On the map, she started running her hands over the names of cities, until they started to tingle and stopped at a spot near the town of Slidell in Louisiana. According to Rosemary, she had already seen in her visions that Andre was dead, but she didn't want to tell his sister at that moment, instead she said it was to call the police. Elsewhere, Chris Daigle's brother Andre, saw his brother's truck missing next to his house. Immediately he called the police, the person in the vehicle noticed and ran away. The police then mounted a siege and the truck was intercepted near the town of Slidell, the same town where the psychic said the victim was. In the truck there were two occupants, Charles Gervais and Michael Phillips who were later proven to be responsible for the death of Andre Daigle. Charles and Michael gave details about the crime and led the police to the location of Andre's body, which was the same location the psychic had pointed out. The girl who approached Andre at the bar was also arrested, as she was an accomplice of the assassins, it was she who lured the victim into an ambush. Charles and Michael were found guilty of first-degree murder and were sentenced to life in prison. During the trial, psychic Rosemary Kerr told the jury how she helped find the victim's body and find the killers. She also said that Andre's spirit communicated with her several times and asked her family to forgive the killers. Well guys, that's it for today, thanks for watching and see you next time.